Greetings, Science Advisor Board members. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to view this recorded presentation. The purpose of this presentation is to provide an overview of the DTC. Some materials will be review for returning Science Advisory Board members, while some aspects will be new for all members. I will start by describing the DTC's mission and governance, provide a brief summary of the DTC's funding before describing in more detail the various ways the DTC interacts with the community, and wrap up by providing an outlook for the future. The purpose of the DTC is to facilitate the interaction and transition of NWP technology between research and operations. The DTC currently fulfills its mission by supporting operational NWP systems to the community and providing developer support, which conduct, provides a conduit for new innovations to be added to community codes and then thoroughly tested and evaluated for potential operational implementation. In addition, the DTC facilitates community interactions through its visitor program, hosting workshops, and a newsletter. The DTC is a partnership between NOAA, the Air Force, and NCAR. In addition, NSF has historically provided funding to support our visitor program. The DTC is a distributed facility whose staff are affiliated with NCAR and NOAA. Most NCAR staff are affiliated with the Research Applications Laboratory, but we do have a few staff who are affiliated with the Mesoscale and Microscale Meteorology Laboratory. Most NOAA staff are affiliated with the Global Systems Laboratory, but a few are affiliated with the Physical Sciences Laboratory. The DTC was established in 2003. At that time, the DTC was focused on the WARF modeling system and was referred to as the WARF DTC. Over the years, the scope of the DTC expanded and the DTC charter was updated in 2016 to reflect this broader scope. For 2021 to 2022, the DTC has an overall budget of approximately $6 million through contributions from both the research and operational branches of NOAA, the Air Force, and NCAR and GSL base funds, with a small amount of funding from NSF to support the DTC visitor program. The DTC has about 55 staff members, where staff are not necessarily full-time on DTC projects. About one-third of our staff are affiliated with NOAA, and the other two-thirds are affiliated with NCAR. The DTC's Director's Office is currently hosted by NCAR's Research Applications Laboratory. This diagram shows the overall structure of the DTC, including its external governance and the three basic areas covered by its activities. While DTC activities can generally be grouped under community software and tools, testing evaluation projects, and community interactions and outreach, it's the interplay of these three elements that lead to successful transitions of research to operations. The DTC leads play a major role in the planning and execution of the activities in these three basic areas. This slide shows the leads from the NCAR node along with the activities they are currently leading. And this slide shows the leads from the NOAA node along with the activities they are currently leading. Activities for which staff from both nodes are contributing have co-leads, one from NCAR and one from NOAA. The overall management of the DTC is handled by myself as the director and deputy directors from each node of the DTC. The executive committee is comprised of senior executives from each of the DTC partners and is responsible for appointing the DTC director, providing executive oversight, approving the DTC's operating plan and budget, and approving SAB membership. The management board is comprised of two representatives of each partner organization and works with the DTC director to prepare the DTC's operating plan, nominates SAB members, and is responsible for approving funding for the DTC visitor projects. The Science Advisory Board is comprised of representatives from both the operational and research communities and is tasked with providing the DTC Director with advice on strategic direction and objectives, reviewing the DTC Visitor Program proposals, and recommending codes for testing. 
This slide shows the current membership of the Executive Committee and the Management Board. And this slide shows the current membership of the Science Advisory Board. Note that appointments to the Science Advisory Board are for three years with the possibility of renewal. Terms are staggered such that terms expire for approximately one-third of the members each year. We strive to have a strong representation from the academic community and include at least one member from the private sector. The six new Science Advisory Board members are indicated by red font. This slide shows the funding history for the DTC over the past 11 years, including a breakdown by sponsor. Note that 300 k was provided this year by the EPIC Program Office to support the DTC transitioning some of its software support activities to the EPIC contractor. In some ways, this graphic oversimplifies the actual funding and planning situation because the period of performance and planning processes vary by sponsor. This schematic depicts the timeline for planning and impl implementation um, this, for this current year, which captures the complexity of our planning process. Communication between the partners through the Executive Committee and Management Board is critical to maintaining a strong partnership where the various funded activities weave together into an integrated plan. I will now turn to describing the various approaches for engaging the community in the R2O process. The first area is software systems, which provides an important framework for bringing together operational capabilities and research inf innovations to accelerate the transition of new technology into operations by facilitating carefully controlled extensive testing evaluation. Since the DTC does not actually undertake development for most of the systems it works with, a close collaboration between the DTC and the respective developers is critical to the success of work in this area. All of the software we work with is a shared resource with distributed development that includes the capabilities of current operational systems. The ongoing development is maintained under mutually agreed upon software management plans where the code repositories are maintained under a version control software and the plan <clears throat> plan includes protocols for proposing and approving modifications to the software. Periodic releases include the latest developments and undergo additional testing for robustness and portability. Centralized support is provided by for the public releases through up-to-date documentation, tutorials, and user support through either online user forums or GitHub discussions. These periodic releases provide the broad community with a robust package to work with, but active developers are encouraged to work directly with the code repositories to assure their development is kept up to date with the latest evolution of the code base. This slide summarizes the current software systems for which the DTC plays some role in the software management and support. Note that the role the DTC plays varies by system. The Unified Forecast System, which is NOAA's next generation modeling system, is our newest area of engagement. Of these systems, the GSI ENKF Data Simulation System and HWARF are considered legacy systems for which we will be stepping back from code management and user support responsibilities over the coming year. We also anticipate gradually stepping back from our responsibilities for the GFDL Vortex Tracker, the Unified Post Processor, and the Unified Forecast System applications as the EPIC contractor begins to take over these responsibilities. The current plan is that the DTC will retain its code management and support responsibilities for the Common Community Physics Package and MET+. Plus. Over the past year, the DTC played a major role in the March release of the UFS Short Range Weather Application, as well as releases of the Unified Post Processor and CCPP, and its companion single column model, which were part of this coordinated effort. In addition, there was a coordinated release of MET Plus back in May and a release of MET Express in August. The community events hosted by the DTC serve as an important mechanism for bringing together the research and operations communities to discuss how to work together to advance numerical weather prediction. 
This slide shows a summary of the events the DTC has hosted over the past three years. These events range from general workshops that bring the community together to discuss a wide range of topics to, workshop <clears throat> to workshops focused on a specific topic such as evaluation metrics or workflow. We also host instructional events like AMS short courses or training events. Our cloud and containers technology workshop this past summer engaged the academic community from 13 U.S. universities and two international institutions in a discussion focused on incorporating hands-on learning opportunities into new or existing NWP curriculum. In addition to workshops, the DTC publishes a newsletter that serves as an important mechanism for sharing information on DTC activities as well as encouraging dialogue between research and operations. The newsletter is organized around seven topic areas, a lead story that covers a topic of general interest, the director's corner for which we invite contributions from the community, bridges to operations, which focuses on activities that have impacted or have the potential to impact operations, Community Connections, which informs the community about community events, interactions, or resources. A feature article on a visitor project. A feature article on a DTC staff member. And finally, a short informational article referred to as, Did You Know? Ideas for these articles have come from our leads and staff, where contributions from outside the DTC are encouraged. The DTC Visitor Program provides a framework for engaging the research community in projects directed at improving NWP, with an eye towards eventually improving operational forecasts. In its current state, the DTC Visitor Program supports two types of projects, PI projects or a graduate student project. A call for proposals is open year-round where the focus areas are periodically updated based on input from the DTC leads. Proposals are reviewed by DTC staff and Science Advisory Board members and approved for funding by the DTC Management Board. A majority of our funded projects involve the academic community, but participants also include the private sector as well as interna the international community. Past history has shown us that projects that align with DTC activities are more likely to have a positive impact on the R2O process. Experience over the last 17 years has shown that the elements I have presented are key to providing a strong foundation for testing evaluation needed to determine which innovations are ready to be transitioned operations. The constraint the DTC has faced in the past is that supporting this foundation has li <clears throat> limited resources to actually conduct testing evaluation in the manner necessary to have the impact on the Idaho process that was originally envisioned for the DTC. The footprint of the DTC software responsibilities is starting to show promise of shrinking in the coming years. With our support for NOAA's current data assimilation system ending in December, there is a potential for an additional 125K being available to invest in testing evaluation activities for AOP 2022. On the other hand, the closure of our support for HWARF will not free up any resources since that funding is currently slated to support the UFS hurricane application. The award of the EPIC contract promises to gradually reduce the footprint of our UFS support, software support activities, but the timeline and the full extent of the reduction is still uncertain. The numbers shown on this slide represent a thought experiment where I am assuming the DTC totally steps back from its current responsibilities for the listed applications and software packages at the same time the overall funding stays constant. My guess is that both of these assumptions may be overly optimistic. Working from the optimistic numbers on the prior slide, we would arrive at a breakdown more along the lines that are shown on this slide, which would definitely set up the DTC for more impactful testing and evaluation efforts. In summary, I'm seeing positive signs on the horizon that the DTC will be evolving towards larger investments in testing evaluation activities. 
While there have been some bumps in the road, we have reached three important milestones over the past year that I interpret as moving us in the right direction. First, we selected definitive dates for ending support for the legacy systems. Second, the award of the EPIC contract was finally announced in the spring. And third, the DTC is participating in the process of defining proper priorities for EPIC and criteria for success. While the trend looks positive, it will be important to keep in mind these changes will not occur overnight, especially since it will be important to maintain support for the community during this transition phase. Given these positive signs, the time is right to start exploring what approaches will be most effective and impactful for the DTC to increase its engagement in testing evaluation activities. During this year's Science Advisory Board meeting, we will be looking to you for advice on what scientific questions the DTC should be considering and how we can effect, most effectively engage the community to address these questions. We are looking forward to lively discussion and hearing your thoughts on how the DTC can position itself to engage the community to advance NWP techniques and accelerate the R2O process.